Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. For this time, we'll be talking about... So, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video tutorial. This video tutorial is divided into four lessons. Namely, Lesson 1, Representation of Function. Lesson 2, Evaluation of Functions. Lesson 3, Operations on functions. Lesson 4. Applications involving functions. First, let's talk about representation of functions. But before we proceed, let me first ask you this question. Are there instances in your life where functions are applicable? And how? I have here some examples of real-life situations involving functions that we may encounter every day. Situation 1. The monthly electric bill depends on the number of kilowatts used. This situation can be written as the monthly electric bill is a function of the number of kilowatts used. Situation number 2. Your win rate in Mobile Legend depends on how many matches you have won. It can also be rewritten as this way. Your win rate in Mobile Legend is a function of how many matches you have won. As you can see, we have changed the word depends into is a function of. And also in number two, we have also changed the word depends into is a function of. That is because when we say function, it means that it is the result of something that you have done. For situation number one, monthly electric bill is the result of what you have done, which is the number of kilowatts used. And for situation number two, your win rate in Mobile Legends is, your, is the result of what you have done, which is the number of matches you have won. Now let's continue. I want you to observe and discover the relationship that exists between set A and set B. How is set A related to set B? Notice that every element in set A there corresponds a unique element in set B. Namely, element negative 1 corresponds only to 1. Element 0 corresponds only to 2. Element 1 is only paired to 3. Element 2 is only paired to 4. So we can say that function is a relation in which each input, which is the domain, has only one output, which is the range. So in this illustration, our input is set A and our output is set B. So this set A is the domain, while set B is our range. A function can be represented in many forms. It can be represented through mapping diagram, example of which is this one. This is the input while this one is the output. As you can see, each element in the input is paired only once in the output. Next representation of function is table form. This one is an example of a table form of a function. So this column here is the input while this column here is the output. Just like the mapping diagram, each element in the input 
is paired once only in the output. Next representation of functions is through ordered pair. Example of an ordered pair is this one. The first value is the x and the next value is our y. x is the input while y is the output. x is the domain while again y is the range. Again, x is the input or the domain while y is the output or the range. Next, functions can be represented algebraically or through an equation. Example is this equation. f of x is equal to x plus 3. Or it can be written as this one. y is equal to x plus 3. So, in this equation, if x is negative 2, then let's substitute that value to our x. So, f of negative 2 is equal to negative 2 plus 3. Negative 2 plus 3, that will be equal to 1. So, f of negative 2 is equal to 1. We can write this one, this x and this f of x, to an ordered pair. Again, this one is the x and this one is the y. So, our x was negative 2 and the result, which is the output or the range or the y, is 1. That goes the same way with the other values of x as negative 1, x as 0, or x as negative 1. Next, functions can be represented visually or through a graph. Example, let's use the equation f of x is equal to x plus 3 and when we substitute the values of x, we get these outputs 1, 2, and 3, 4. So let's try to graph this ordered pair in our graph. Negative 2 is paired with 1. Again, these things here are our x, while these things here are our y. And in this Cartesian plane, this one is our x, while this line here is our y. Negative 2 is found here, and 1 in the y is found here. So the first location is there. Next, negative 1 is our x and is paired with 2 in the y. So, what, negative 1 and 2 is located here. Next, 0 is paired with 3. So, 0, 3. Next, 1 is paired with 4. 1 is is paired with 4 which is found here. So the graph of f of x is equal to x plus 3 is this one. Next, functions can be represented verbally or through words. So here, we will be uh, representing our functions in a sentence form. Example. So, let's use this uh, equation or this function. For the input x, the function gives the value 
to x increase by 3. So, from the word x increase by 3, that means x plus 3. So, f of x is equal to x plus 3. Next, let's talk about types of functions. So, the first type of function that we'll be talking is linear function. Linear function is defined as a function if f of x is equal to mx plus b, where m and b are real numbers. Example, f of x is equal to 3x plus 2. So, to identify easily an equation as linear function, just look at the exponent of your x. If the exponent of your x is only 1, then that equation is a linear function. Example, the exponent of x here is 1. So this equation is a linear function. A linear function is a constant function. If f of x is equal to mx plus b, where m is equal to 0, then if this m is equal to 0, so 0 times x is 0. Because any number multiplied by 0 is equal to 0. So what is left is the constant number which is b. Then, f of x is equal to b. That is why it is called constant function because what is left in your equation is only the constant number. Example, f of x is equal to 2. A linear function is an identity function if f of x is equal to mx plus b where m is equal to 1 so this one will be 1 and b is equal to 0 so if our value of x here is multiplied by 1 then the result is itself so that is why this function is called identity function because what is the value of x will be automatically the result of your function. Another type of function is quadratic function. A quadratic function is any equation of the form f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c where a b and c are real numbers and a should not be equal to zero because if a is equal to zero zero times any number that is substituted to x will be equal to zero so this one will be zero so what is left is bx plus c that becomes a linear function Examples of quadratic functions are the following. f of x is equal to 5x squared plus 3x plus 1. Next example, y is equal to negative 10x squared plus 10. Next example, f of x is equal to x squared. Next example, y is equal to 1 half x squared plus 1 fourth x. So as you can see in the examples, there is a common exponent and that is 2. So to simply identify a function as quadratic function, simply locate the highest exponent. If 
the highest exponent is 2, then that equation is a quadratic function or a quadratic equation. Next type of function is absolute value function. It is a function that contains an algebraic expression or equation within an absolute value symbols. So these symbols are for absolute value. Examples of an absolute value function are the following. 1. f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. Next example, f of x is equal to the absolute value of x minus 5. Next example, y is equal to the absolute value of negative x plus 3. The graph of an absolute value function is always formed this way. It's either a V that faces upward or a V that faces downward. Next type of function is the piecewise function. It is a function defined by a multiple sub-functions where each sub-functions applies to a certain interval of the main function's domain. So, to simply remember what is a piecewise function from the word itself, piece. So, this function is written piece by piece. So, maybe there are two pieces of equation or maybe three or more example f of x is equal to negative 2x if x is lesser than negative 3 3x minus 1 if x is greater than or equal to negative 3 but lesser than or equal to 2. And it is also negative 4x if x is greater than 2. Next type of function is the one-to-one -one function. It is a function if no two elements in the domain that corresponds to the same element in the range. So simply, from the word 1 to 1, 1 domain is to 1 range. 1 input is equal to 1 output. 1 value of x is equal to 1 value of y. That is a 1 to 1 function. Example, f of x is equal to 3x minus 5. This one is an example of a one-to-one -one function because it is a linear function. Second example, um, in the mapping diagram, as you can see, 1 is only paired to negative 1 while 2 is only paired to 1 and while and 3 is only paired to 0 so each element in the input is only paired once in the output so if you graph a one to one function it is a straight line it's either going there or here and how to test that that graph is a one-to-one -one function if it passes the vertical line test and the horizontal line test once only then that graph or that um, equation or that function is a one-to-one -one function. The last type of function that we'll be talking in this video is 
the many to one function. It is a function if two or more elements in the domain corresponds to the same element in the range. So just like so one to one function, in many to one function, there are many domain that corresponds to only one range or there are many input but corresponds to one output or there are many values of x that corresponds to only one value of y examples we have f of x is equal to 3x squared minus 5 this function is a quadratic function because the exponent is 2. So if we have a quadratic function or any function with 2 or more as an exponent of x, then that equation is an example of a many to one function. Next example. In this mapping diagram, one is paired only once with negative one, but there are two input that is paired only with one output. So there are many to one. So this one is an example of a many to one function. Now, in the graph, how to identify that a graph is a many-to-one function? If the graph passes the vertical line test once only, but when it passes the horizontal line test, it intersects twice or more. So, here, if we will test this one, the graph passes the vertical line test only once. But when we test it using the horizontal line test, some parts of the graph passes the horizontal line test thrice or twice or more so this graph is an example of a many to one function lesson two which is about evaluation of functions so to evaluate a function means to replace the function variables with the indicated specific value or expressions so it means we just do substitution substitute a certain value to x for example f of x is equal to 3x plus 1 evaluate f of negative 1 and f of 0 so simply substitute negative 1 to our x here and substitute 0 to our x here. So for the solution, we have for negative 1, the excess will be changed to negative 1. So here, f of negative 1 is equal to 3 times negative 1 plus 1. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3 plus 1. So, negative 3 plus 1 is equal to negative 2. And for f of 0, that is equal to 3 times 0 plus 1. 3 times 0 is 0. Bring down 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. Now, let's have more examples on evaluation of functions. 
So for the first example, if f of x is equal to 5x minus 3, evaluate f of negative x and f of x plus 3. So again, when we say evaluate or evaluation of functions, it means we will just substitute that value to our x in our equation. So for the solution, first copy the given f of negative x. Next, from this given, the x's here will be changed to negative x. So, that would be f of negative x is equal to copy 5. And x here will be changed to negative x minus 3. Next, copy f of negative x is equal to 5 times negative x is negative 5x and copy negative 3. So our final answer will be this one. f of negative x is equal to negative 5x minus 3. Next, for f of x plus 3, again, just like the first uh, example, we will just change this excess with x plus 3. So, that would be f. So, the x here will be changed to x plus 3. Is equal to 5. And x here will be changed to x plus 3 again. And copy minus 3. Next. Again, copy f of x plus 3. Next. So, we will distribute 5 to this equation. So, 5 times x is 5x. 5 times positive 3 is positive 15. And bring down negative 3. Next, if there are numbers that can be combined, just like positive 15 and negative 3, let's combine that one. So, copy f of x plus 3 is equal to copy 5x and then 15 minus 3 is 12. So the final answer will be f of, neg f of x plus 3 is equal to 5x plus 12. Now let's have example number 2. Example number 2 is a piecewise function. So again, why is it a piecewise function? Because there are uh, pieces of equations in our function. So, if f of x is equal to x squared plus 2 if the value of x is lesser than 0 and f of x is equal to 5x plus 2 if the value of our x is greater than or equal to 0. So again, if the value of x is lesser than 0, just like, kung sa may mga lesser than sa 0, like negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, then we will use this equation, x squared plus 2. But if the value of x is greater than or equal to 0, so, what are those values? Kay equal to man. So, up is 0. So, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on and so forth. So, if those are the values, then we will use this equation, which is 5x plus 2. 
So evaluate f of negative 2 and f of 0. So to solve that one, f of negative 2. Negative 2, is it lesser than 0 or is it greater than or equal to 0? So negative 2 is lesser than 0. So we will use this equation. Excess here will be changed to negative 2. So that will be f of negative 2 is equal to change the x with negative 2 copy square plus 2 next negative 2 square is positive 4 and then copy 2 Next, copy f of negative 2. 4 plus 2 is 6. And that will be our final answer. For f of 0, is 0 lesser than 0? Or is it greater than or equal to 0? So the correct answer is 0 is equal to 0. So, we will use this equation. And change the excess with 0. So copy F. And X will be changed to 0. Is equal to. Copy 5. Change X with 0. And copy. Plus 2. Next. Copy F of 0. Is equal to. 5 times 0. So again, let's remember, any number multiplied by 0 is always 0. And copy plus 2. Next, copy f of 0. 0 plus 2. And that is 2. So the final answer is f of 2 is equal to f of 0 is equal to 2. So here we have example number 3. For example number 3, our function is in fraction form. So if g of x is equal to x squared plus 4 divided by x or over x, then evaluate g of 1 half and g of 0. So again, when we say evaluate, let's substitute that value to the following excess in our given. So for the solution, uh, one half will be uh, substituted to the excess here. So copy G and change X with one half is equal to change the X with 1 half, so that would be 1 half squared and copy plus 4 over x will be changed to 1 half. Next, copy again g of 1 half. So 1 half squared is 1 fourth. How did we do that one? If you don't have a calculator, you will just distribute this two here with the following values inside so one for the numerator and one for the denominator so one again one squared is one two squared is four and copy plus four over one half so, uh, let's move this one. So here, 1 half plus 4 
is that would be 4 and 1 fourth over 1 half. So if you don't have a calculator, you can divide that one manually. You can change 4 and 1 fourth to 4.25 and because that is uh, divided by 1 half we can change that one to times and then do the reciprocal of 1 half so that will be 2 over 1 so again what did we do here is copy 4 and 1 fourth, which we changed that one into a decimal form para mas dali masabtan, and then change the division sign or the, this fraction uh, bar to multiplication and then reciprocal the denominator. Do the reciprocal of the denominator. So the reciprocal of 1 half is 2 over 1. So 4.25 times 2 is 8.5. And then, as we know, the denominator of 4.25 is 1. So 1 times 1 is 1. So the final answer will be G of 1 half is equal to 8.5 or 8 and 1 half so you can have a mixed number or in a decimal form answer for g of 0 so again let's substitute 0 to the following excess so copy g change x to 0 is equal to change this x to 0 so that will be 0 squared plus 4 over and this x will be changed to 0 again copy g of 0 next 0 squared is 0 plus 4 and copy 0 So, g of 0 is equal to 0 plus 4 is 4 over is 4 over 0. And for the final answer, as we all know, any number divided by 0 is undefined. Let's remember the important rules when it comes to zero. When zero is being divided by any number, then the answer will be zero. But if any number is divided by zero, then the answer will be undefined. But zero divided by zero is undefined if we're talking about arithmetic, but it is indeterminate when we talk about limits. For example, number 4, we have an ordered pair. So if C of an ordered pair X and Y is equal to 2X minus 5Y, then evaluate C of the ordered pair 3 and negative 5. So here, let's remember that an ordered pair is in this form x and then the y is the second value so our x here is 3 and our y here is negative 5 so x here will be changed to 3 and y here will be changed to negative 5 so solution 
Copy the given. And substitute the following given to our uh, equation. So, x will be changed to 3. And y will be changed to negative 5. Copy 2. x will be changed to 3. And copy negative 5. And y will be changed to negative 5. Next, again copy the ordered pair is equal to 2 times 3 is 6 and negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. Again, that becomes positive because a negative number times a negative number is positive. Again, copy the ordered pair. 6 plus 25 is 31. So the final answer is 31. Now for the last example and evaluation of functions, we have if f of x is equal to 3x squared minus 8x plus 7, Evaluate f of 1 plus f of negative 1. So what is new here is that there are two given that should be added. So first, let's solve f of 1 and let's solve f of negative 1. And the result will be added to get the final answer. So solution. First, copy f of negative f of one plus f of negative one is equal to. So first, let's substitute negative one to the following excess. <clears throat> that is, the x here will be changed to one. The x here will be changed to one. So three times one squared. Minus 8 times 1 plus 7. And then put plus sign. So let's group first this one. And then another group for f of negative 1. So the excess here will be changed to negative 1. So, copy 3, open parenthesis, copy 3, change x with negative 1, and then don't forget the square, minus 8, change x with negative 1 again, and don't forget plus 7. So, uh, let's change the parenthesis. Into a bracket. Because there are a lot of uh, parentheses inside this group and also in this group. So, so... <clears throat> 1 squared is 1 and 1 times 3 is 3 negative 8 times 1 is negative 8 and then plus 7 so group that one then don't forget the plus sign and for this group negative 1 squared is 1 and 1 times 3 is 3 Negative 8 times negative 1 is positive 8. And then don't forget plus 7. So, as what I have told you earlier, let us solve first the f of 1 
and then let us solve next the f of negative 1 and then let's add both answers to get the final answer so 3 minus 8 is negative 5 plus 7 is 2 plus 3 plus 8 is 11 plus 7 is 18 2 plus 18 is 20 so f of 1 plus f of negative 1 is equal to 20.